Uh, the Parts of Humans That Science Can't Explain by Lacey Root. The book is called And Then Came the Flood. If you're interested, um, she's an independent author. She literally mails these out of her own apartment. So, like, I am. So, go to her website, LaceyRoot.com, and pick up a copy. All right. There are parts of humans that science can't explain. We know the mechanics of organs and which way the blood flows. We know the effects of smoking on the human body and the typical reactions of taste buds. Scientists like to think that, they, that in time, they will know everything. But the problem with knowing everything is that oftentimes we forget what's worth remembering. The doctor sits me at the table and he asks me to stick my tongue out. I do. I ask him if he can see the paintings I carry in the back of my throat. He laughs as if I'm telling a joke I'm not. I've got Basquiat, Shelley, Van Gogh, and Da Vinci, so when I laugh, I taste brush strokes. I ask him if he can stick out his tongue so I can see what he has trapped inside of him. He hesitates a little, then he does, and I see a man who struggles for acceptance and chokes on the word love. So we've got robots that can dismantle bombs so soldiers can still pull triggers with their fingers. We've got a blueprint for a hotel that will be located on the moon in the year 2047. We've got microchips small enough to be slipped inside of hair follicles, yet we somehow still have a hard time saying words like please and thank you and offering our hands to help strangers. The psychiatrist asked me what I'm feeling so she can prescribe me a pill to take that feeling away as if it's something that can be solved. I sit there silent, hoping not to interfere with the tambourines and trumpets being played in my head. She stares in my eyes, and I hope that she can see my insides dancing, but I can tell by the sigh on her face that he, she hasn't danced in a very, a very long time. This is what we are creating. A world where the living and breathing are dependent on inanimate objects that only move because they have buttons and batteries when we have hearts. I go to school to make sense of this, to try to find a formula that can save us. When my professor instructs me to lift my head up off my desk and quit sleeping, I tell him I'm not sleeping, I'm dreaming. There's a difference. I ask him if he dreams and he tells me that there isn't enough time for that. We have work to do. So I take out my pen and paper and I draw him what I dream and it's people. People that sleep in rain clouds and pass out more smiles than business cards. People that find beauty in broken things. It is people who can speak every language so we can better understand each other while he continues to lecture about the greatest inventions of the 21st century. All the students in class speak excitedly about iPhones, satellite radios, and plasma screen TVs that can help us see things more clearly. This world that we are living in seems to me more foreign than Pluto's moons or the idea of being a queen. And it seems that with every great advancement we make, a little more, something more important gets taken back. Like we're trying to prove to ourselves that we're smarter than monkeys and apes because we can build skyscrapers and send rockets to space. To each his own is our motto. And since this is the case, I wish the aliens would come and just attack us today. Because only then will we unite in one world. Instead of being separated by our own governments, prejudices, religions, and races, and only then, only then, we will be able to understand the parts of humans that science can't explain. Yeah. Nice